It's 2003. The Black Eyed Peas just topped the charts with Where Is The Love? And you're getting home from a hard day of sticking chewing gum under the chairs. Taking off your chaff school tie, you sit down at your TV, switch on the PS2, and into the loading screen of Call of Duty you go. It's Omaha Beach. You can hear your captain shouting at you from the front of the landing craft. Bangs, booms in the distance, alerting you to the war raging on ahead. But there's no turning back now. The doors open with a mighty crash as the first wave of men are gunned down by the MG fire seemingly from nowhere, and you jump out. Keeping your head down, you follow the GIs up the beach, men falling left and right. Bullets pinging off hedgehogs that you're carrying behind. This is hell. This was a set piece that sold World War II shooters to the masses back in 2003, and the Call of Duty's original release. Taking inspiration from films such as Saving Private Ryan, it captured the hell of this glorious yet harrowing moment in military history. Fast forward 16 years, what's changed? It's very rare that you get a game where you can capture feelings like terror, beauty, comradeship and all-round badassery all together at once. This is hell let loose. It's done something that not really any other game has done in recent years. The graphics are amazing. They don't leave anything to the imagination. Omaha Beach is one of the best looking maps of recent years in gaming, full stop. Tracks in the mud through fields, bushes used as cover, seeing explosions off in the distance or a tank taking a Panzerfaust nearby. It all looks gorgeous. Sparks flying everywhere, giving you hell unless you take cover. The lighting, oh my, the lighting in this game is something else. As a German soldier defending the ridgeline, as US GIs come through the breaches of the sand, the sun glints down off the helmets and the rifles. Attackers using this to their advantage, with the sun at their backs making snipers almost useless in certain situations. As a side note, I, I was making this video and I just remembered that I actually made a startup introduction to this game all the way back in 2017. Jeez, it's strange the videos you make and you never remember. The sound though. Oh my. When I first got into the game, the first bullet I shot scared the living hell out of me. Each weapon has its own unique sound, but not the Call of Duty pea shooter sound. The black sound. You know, the type of gun that makes you leak when it comes unexpectedly. Each and everything adds to the cinematic nature of it though. Seeing a fellow soldier drop by your side, hearing a scream in the room next door, followed by a sound like a sack of potatoes hitting the wooden floorboards. Being a hardcore shooter aimed at simulating World War II warfare, how let loose has a fast kill time. And I mean insurgency fast kill time. Most of the time, one shot should suffice into an enemy's chest. Of course, headshots are always a one hit kill. The gun doesn't really matter, as you'd expect. Most rifles are one hit to the chest. SMGs take a few more, but make up for it for their rate of fire. And of course, snipers are deadly. The most fun I had in the game was teaming up with my mate James. Him going sniper and me spotter. I would call out an enemy position and few seconds later, they would fall dead into the dirt. If done correctly, it can be one of the most effective infantry dispatching methods in the game. Speaking of infantry dispatching methods, shrapnel. It will fly off buildings and grenades as they land nearby. So even if you think, this ain't gonna hit me, don't underestimate a simple prone to the ground when the grenade falls nearby, as it can save your life as shards of metal fly over your head that could kill you. And this brings me on to the suppression mechanic. Oh my, I don't think any game has done it as well as Howl Let Lose. Most games, if you shout, SUPPRESSING <laughs> you'll have a few guys spraying at the general place where they think the enemies are hiding. But since it doesn't really do anything, the enemies will just fire back as if nothing happens. But not anymore. Nah, screw that. If an enemy shoots nearby, you will know. The screen will go black and white. Sound fading, screen shaking, any bullets coming over the top of you will pin you to the ground. Not just to avoid them, but you literally can't fire back. You can't do anything. Wanna return fire? Well, tough luck, soldier. You gotta wait this hellstorm out. So Sorry, I got a little bit carried away there. Maps, maps, maps. Probably one of the most important parts of a game like this. It happens many a time. A game has incredible mechanics, it has great gameplay, but my, if the developer slacks on the map making, there will be trouble. Quite rightly, this game has been compared to Postscriptum quite a lot, a game that I am yet to play, but planning on getting into in the next few days. In that game, it seems like the maps are much larger, giving more of a squad feel. I mean, the game, not the unit. But Hell Let Loose doesn't quite go down that route. And personally, I think the maps are perfect, taking the massive maps and giving them a bit more structure, a bit of a phase pull. 
You never have to run for miles, and with the unlimited sprint stamina, it's not really an issue if you need to anyway. You're always in danger of coming under enemy fire, so you always have to watch your back. Rarely are there massive swathes of map that go untouched. Battles are raging on everywhere, and for the 100 player pop cap, I think the maps really know what they're doing. And this introduces the garrison spawning. As a commander or an officer class, you're able to put down the outpost spawns and garrison spawns. The garrison spawns are limited to only a certain amount for the whole team, but they can be set up wherever in order to let your whole team respawn there. Countless times an officer has stuck behind enemy lines, placed a garrison spawn, and then ensuing a mass surrounding of the enemy, which is incredible. But they can be destroyed by the enemy, so watch it. Additionally, you can get the outpost spawns, which you can only put down as an officer and only your squad can spawn there. These are much more commonly used by people just to get their men into certain positions in the map. But what Hell Let Loose really does perfectly is the map never gets boring. It doesn't matter what class you're playing. Personally, my favourite is of course the new Omaha Beach. Starting with that insane beach attack, moving onto the ridge line where the trench warfare comes into action. Pushing back from there is rows and rows of fields, only using wheat as cover and trying to hug these hedge lines. And there are villages spotted in between breaking it up. The maps themselves feel massive, but they're never really that tough to traverse. There's a lot of trickery in well-placed hedges and buildings, making it seem so real. Whether it's close quarters fightings in a building through the town, with MGs positioned in windows or church towers with snipers scouting out, moving onto field pushes, the most deadly of them all, trying to hug a hedge line to give yourself as much cover as possible, but then having to bite the bullet, pardon the pun, and just push across an open field and dive into the trench on the other side. There are a few gaming experiences out there that can really capture this and give you that feeling. At the moment, the one criticism I would have about the maps are the hedges. You're not quite able to get over them as infantry, which is fair enough, but tanks get stuck on literally everything. These things are indestructible and surely a massive tiger tank should be able to push its way through a hedge. Of course, the game is still in early access, so I'm sure things like destructible terrain may come in in the future. But Hell Let Loose introduces Warfare Mode. It is your typical point capture, push and pull. Each team starts with 3 HQ points and has a rush to capture and defend certain points on the map. These can be great like towns and villages with buildings to hide in, points to defend and choke points to abuse, or they can be bunkers in the middle of fields. And as you might expect, they are hell. Forget the MG fire pinning you to the dirt. Once the artillery has a range on you, the only thing that can keep you alive is crossed fingers and bores of steel. Furthermore, there's an offensive mode. Normally on maps like Omaha Beach, this is an attack and defend sort of mode. The same principle as before, but once a point is captured, the defending enemy has to pull back and cannot retake. And then the roles are reversed. This is a great game mode, but can tend to end up being a little bit faster than the warfare game mode as you would expect. But Howl Let Loose brings in something amazing, cooperation. I know, it seems rare in multiplayer games of 2019, but it is there and it's in waves. Nearly every server will have comms always active, officers talking to other officers and commanders. Oh mama, they're shooting at me. Suppressing, suppressing, from the same place. Get down, they're shooting through the bushes. It's, a, it's an MG. Are you guys good to heal? Oh, I'm dead from behind, dead from behind, I think. Oh shit, 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 shit. They're shooting us through the bushes. Oh, I've died as well. Oh. I can't. Oh fuck, they just. It was a nice try. Oh, we were close to that tank. I hit the panzer. Oh, okay. Ollie, tank. Tank is now here. Let's go for that tank. I feel like it's. We can get up There's an enemy, enemy. Oh, tank's down. Tank's down. Tank's down. Nearby. Enemy AT somewhere nearby just shot our tank. And relaying commands to their units and squads. The whole 50 players team working together in order to complete the objectives. The commander on your team placing attack points so officers can order their squads to force their way into certain areas as commanded. A great example of this is as I mentioned, I played Recon. Me and James were taking pot shots, me marking out enemies and him taking them out with a swift sniper shot to the face. But multiple times we came across tanks. And of course, in our position, there's nothing we could really do against those armored hulls. And these tanks were not happy to see us. The enemy team had obviously called in on the radios that there was a recon squad causing hell on their right flank, so we were being hunted, and the tank had us pinned. So I marked its coordinates on the map. I called into the commander that there was a tiger being very mean at this point, and sure enough, only seconds later, there was a team marker placed on its position, and four anti tank crewmen all converged on this tiger's point to take it out. And boy, did it feel good. But this isn't just a one-off. This happens all the time in Hell Let Loose. Later on, we returned the favor. Our men were trying to push into a village, but all that was ahead was open fields and no cover. 
and there was an MG spraying down anyone that attempted to run. So the commander called in our recon squad, giving us the position of the gunner, and it turned out this guy was right in the window on the top floor of a barn. It was pretty impossible to hit with any mid-range rifle, but we didn't have a mid-range rifle. So I spotted him, and sure enough, that man forgot to put his brains back into his head that night. And yes, you may hear me talking about the commander quite a lot, but it is an incredibly important role in the game. There is one commander per team. Normally if it's a clan server, someone in the clan knows what they're doing. Their infantry squads are all with their own officer who can communicate with the commander and other squads. And in the infantry squad, there are anti-tank, medics, private support, MGs, and everything you'd expect. But everyone has an important role in the war to come. And when it all comes together, with everyone doing their role, commanders giving orders, officers relaying it to their men, and infantry doing their part, Oh boy, it's an incredible experience. Then you have the armor. Often three people per tank having to work together to make the goddamn thing goddamn move. Vulnerable from the back, but deadly if used well. Also, using commanders and officers to get in good positions and take out other enemy tanks and armor. And of course, the recon squads, as I explained before, which do basically what you would expect. But after all this, many of you will be thinking, DICE doesn't really have an excuse with Battlefield 5 then, do they? And you would be right. This game basically takes what Battlefield 5 did and made it like, well, good. It's such a small team with a limited budget. This is incredible. What essentially is an indie company has made something massive and amazing. Capturing the experience and simulation of war, but not forgetting about intention and gameplay is truly a new feat that I haven't seen in games in the last few years. While still being in early access, it already has fully fledged and enjoyable experience that you can get into, but so much more is being added. New maps, game modes, units, and of course, the necessary bug fixes that you would expect. But if you haven't already, go and check it out, because it is an experience of gaming that you really can't miss. Every now and then it happens. A small team does something amazing, something immersive and jaw-dropping, but most importantly, something incredible. <laughs> I got him. That guy, I can hear him shooting the other side of the fence, so I just ran out of his brain.